Welcome to Tuesday Tidbits, everyone. Today we're, again, rushing the season. I personally like a little snow, but we have not been getting it so far. Although they say maybe this weekend. But anyways, so we're going to do some spring things again today that if you start now, you'll have done for spring. And the other thing we wanted to do was sometimes you have that inclination just to sit. Oh, no. My duct tape started coming in. <laughs> I said that was going to happen. Anyways, um, you just want to sit sometimes and just and you're inclined to do nothing no get a little stitchery going there's nothing worse than an hour later saying well i just wasted an hour of my life which that's okay if you want to do that but what we did is we pulled together some stitchery things that we thought we would entice you with this week and we want to reprise a few products that if you didn't get the first time we really want to make sure you got it because they are invaluable so what we're going to do let's see how should we start let's talk about transfer ease because that's basic for everything we did. Transfer Ease is a product that's put out by Transfer Ease Company. I don't know what it is, it doesn't matter. But anyways, and this is what happens. It comes in sheets and there's a little um, filament on the front. You take this and you run it to your, take it to your printer and you copy your design, you pull your pattern out, you copy your design, whatever you wanna do, and you run this right through the printer so it looks just like this. Now this is an actual purchase pattern that we had that actually we used for one of our block of the months. So after you get it all printed, then what you do is you pull the paper off of it and you end up with this tacky film, so to speak. And then you're gonna take this and you're gonna put it on your project. You stitch through it. Like this. Yep. You can see that the project is there. See if you look at here on this one that I started, there's my transferees. So it's on there, it's not gonna go any place until I tell it to go someplace. So once I'm all done my stitching, I'm gonna just run that under lukewarm water and it will dissolve. This is a starch and something mixture, I don't know what it is. The only caveat we apply to this is make sure your threads and all your fabrics are color fast because it is going to get wet. If you used a blue marker, it'd still get wet. So it's the same old, same old. Yeah, you so, talk about the humidity too though. Oh, that and if the it, other caveat. Yeah, one other copy. If it's really humid out, this can get a little tacky and it's a little bit harder to pull your needle through. But to me, it's still worth it because you have your design right there. So you sit in an air conditioned room. Well, and you can see also on this, you know, when you get some detailed designs, if you had to hold oh. that up against the window, um, you never would be able to get all of that. I'm sorry, right. even with a light box. The thing is, is you can also do this on dark fabrics. Exactly. And the thing is, too, is for those of us who don't have upper arm strength, this is so much better. So this one, oh, I'm just, we're not organized today. This is going to be, sorry, we did not have time to finish some of this stuff. This is going to be a table runner. And the other thing we want to talk about is our toweling. Now we pulled out, what, seven, six or seven, three, six, seven different rolls of toweling, and we're using them for the background or the base for our embroidery. So this one uses... This, t this piece of toweling, it's seamed on both and uh, I'm sorry, both sides. And then I'm deciding whether I wanted to, my original thought was I was going to take this and go like this with it. That was my original thought. But then when I flipped this up just to keep it out of my way, I kind of liked this shape. So I don't know what shape I'm going to do, but all I'll do is when I get to that point is I will just hem this. That's how I'll finish it off. Which that's the beauty of the toweling anyways, is you have two long edges are already hemmed for you. Right, exactly. Now, another thing we're trying to decide on this one, and because we didn't get these done, you'll have to check back and we'll put these up as soon as we get them done done. We had talked about putting some of the wide rickrack, like maybe one or two or three stripes down the center. So Just that's, to add to that springness. Yes, Marty really wanted to give it a little bit of zhuzh, I guess you would say. So on this one, again, I tried to pull some springy colors of my um, Valdania out. And I started, this I started at about 4 o'clock last night, so eh, it is even later than that. So I did not get a ton of it done. And that brings up another point, which, as I say, we are really all over the place. Let's talk about Google Images. Now, sometimes when we have an idea, but we don't have a pattern for it, we say to ourselves, well, what are we gonna do? So Marty goes to the computer and she pulls up Google Images, and then she'll type in something like, on this one, you probably did border spring border stripe. Spring clip art. 
spring clip art and usually we put in free because that's just how we are and black and white and so it will bring up a thousand and one different um options so then what she did is she just printed this off put it into you put it into word or something mm -hmm. like that right because then you, i can size it to whatever size i want it to be yeah because we had to make sure it fit in the size of the parameters that we wanted so then she was able to print like three or four on a sheet and print that off on your uh, regular piece of paper and then you go to your transfer ease and you print it on that cut them apart and it's because i have there's a there's a um seam or whatever uh whatever break. that break right there so i just put two together and i've got my um, border stripe ready to stitch so that is so much easier than again going back to the light box and all of that so google images can be a but really... there's a lot of really talented designers out there too yeah that you can just take their their patterns and you know transfer them off onto the transfers and you're good to go right so that that for example well let's come back to that this one right here, Marty went to Google Images and you put in spring or something like that. No, it was like, just no. one of the ones that came up on the, Okay. just the spring clip spring art. Spring clip art. So what we did is, again, we took that and we um, printed it off, put it on the transfer ease, and then I stitched that out. Now, one of my thoughts for this project is if you were, some people don't have a lot of storage space, but if you have a spot that you could put something like this, then what you do is come fall, you pop that out, and you make another one, welcome fall. And then you, when it comes later on, you pop that one out and you put welcome or winter, something like this. So you have something, if you have a spot, something that will constantly, because as I said, remember how we did this with our framing? You just put it and we use our little, um, what are these called again? Glazier points. You put them in, you pop it out, and you put another one in. Mom did one of these years ago for Debbie with chickadees for every season. And every year she gets it out and she flips them out. So that's another good way to do something again, using the transfer ease and um, making something that's going to be around for a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to flop this one over here. couple other, th oh, yeah, I already talked about those. This is another one we did. And Marty's been working on this one. And we thought, what a cute little, just a summer, spring, spring. Well, I did realize it has an Easter egg right in the middle of it, so. Well, it doesn't have to be, though. You <laughs> no, could make it an you could Easter leave egg. that off and just put another flower in there. And that's the other nice thing about doing this, too. You can leave out or put in whatever you want to do. So this one, again, it's not done. Don't tell anybody. This one is one that she's been working on. We're miss. oh, no, okay. So anyways, that's another one. Put a few borders on it. Put a little hanger on it. You have this cute little hanger, and you've got another, again, not take up a lot of room. Then we're then moving on. This is a table runner that Marty started, and she's using... It's way on the bottom. I know. This one, but in blue, because we have this in red and blue. We have all of these pretty much in red and blue. That's the downside of this is the because Moda is the manufacturer of these guys and they really don't have a broad color range. They don't have green and you were they after them green. and after them and after them for green. So again, what we did is we did the transferees, put the little um, strips down the middle, and then if you can get close enough mm -hmm. to see, Marty used a chain stitch on this, chain stitch on the flowers, back stitch on the vines. I no, can't back, remember. What. Back stitch on the leaves running. Stitch running on stitch the on that, yeah. Vines. And then she, you were supposed to do something in the center, and then we thought, oh, how cute would little buttons satin be? Satin stitch, and Marty don't do satin stitch. Marty doesn't do satin stitch. I don't mind it, but Marty <clears throat> doesn't like it. I don't like satin stitch. So anyway, so we figured, well, let's get some buttons, and there's all sorts of cute little small. I mean, this would be something a little bit more pastel. If you wanted, I was thinking about this on last night. I could have used those for my little mm, daisy things here, but I didn't have any home and I wasn't going to backwater. So anyways, so again, if we carry these, they're hopefully all on the website. You can take a look and see what we've got. And this was a very simple quilt. I just followed some of the lines. To quilt it, yeah, because yeah. Marty actually layered it up with batting. Yep. And then she, you can see she's just got quilting lines running. Yeah, you can't see it. That's right. the whole point. And then this will be the binding yep. when it grows up. So some of the other basics you really need to have are a good set of needles. These are the ones we really like when we're using the pearl cotton. Those are the clover um, 
chenille needles, right? Mm -hmm. Chenille size 24, 24. Mm -hmm. is what we like. And that works really well with... Because they have a longer eye so that you can thread them easily. And then if you're also, you get this little dude right over here. <laughs> That's what I was just going to show you for those of you who haven't seen this. And I'm sure most of you have. These are also really nice to um, have because I brought mine in in case I had time to stitch today, which I don't think is going to happen. But anyways, and this is what, this is my pair that I really like. These are the itty bitty scissors and the needle threaders. And what I did is I took my needle threader, took a piece of elastic or ribbon, whatever, and tied it onto my itty bitty scissors so that they're always together. And this isn't sliding down the couch cushion and you never find it again. At least till you clean. Which no, is you're not like frequently. my house. I just have six of them. So right. I always and have then one. one day you can have a mother load when you actually <laughs> you got look that for right. Them. <laughs> when I clean the house, it's like, yeah, all right. Exactly. We're restocked. So, anyways, I'm just going to show you real quick how these needle threaders work. I know some of this is very much a refresher for you. Okay, so you take your needle. Can you see from me? See there? Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to take my, and this is a square end and it's nice and sturdy. It's not like those little silver things. You just slide that on your needle. You oh, can't, I, I'm sorry. So much. <laughs> sorry. There you go. So I slide that on my needle, take my thread, push it, push it, put it through the square, pull that down, and your needle is threaded. Isn't that wonderful? No more. Easy peasy. And spitting on your needle and stuff like that. So anyways, those are to me some of the really nice tools. Now the one that Marty was using last night. Oh my God, this was a saver. So I had stitched this table runner in probably two nights and then he had to go right into the little wall hanging. And let me tell you, my little finger right here was very, very sore. Her dingle was sore. <laughs> my finger was sore. It had a boo-boo on it and everything. And when I had to start into this guy, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it done. And then I remembered that I had this guy. The thimble pads. The thimble pads. I'm trying to get them with no glare. And what these are is, the, did I bring them with me? Yes, I did. They're, yeah. take one off for me if you don't mind. They're a little, there you go. They're a little leather. I mean, I'm not a thimble wearer. I just can't stand it. I never have been able to wear a thimble. But this is just, it's a little leather circle that has tackiness Sticky. on the back. And you just stick it right where your finger is going to be pushing. So it's not like you have this big bulky thing on your thing. Oh my goodness. I stitched all of that last night. And I, I started late, too. So, I mean, it's like, it really, I didn't have pain anymore. <laughs> you gotta take one or two of these. I was such it. a whiny <laughs> baby last night. But those things were a miracle and a godsend, let me tell you. So, that's another good thing to have in your arsenal. This is another thing we've talked about before, but I like to remind people every once in a while. This is a hand embroidery book, Stitches at a um, Glance. And it is, unless the price has gone up, it's only eight fifty. So, and the beauty of this is it's got very basic instructions on a, all of your basic stitches, plus some really fun ones. So every once in a while, and yes, I know you can grab your iPad and you can go and you can hunt for stitches, blah, blah, blah. But it's just so nice to have this right there, right where you need it. I was going to get to the yeah, back. Lot, I mean, if you're working with a commercial pattern, it's going to tell you what stitches, but who's saying that you can't change that? Exactly. When I did the, the table runner here, it was me that decided to do... The chain stitch on this, and then, you know, the running stitch, and then the back stitch. It was just what I wanted to do. And this is where you can let your creativity and your imagination yeah. run wild with Well, you. and that's another little note, too. The reason why I did the chain stitch on these flowers is because, and normally you could do it in, like, a back stitch. It is so easy to use a chain stitch and go around tight corners. Yes, it's easier than doing a back Way stitch or a Way easier. Stitch. Yeah, you get a smoother, I think, a smoother one. Now, this is another thing. Now, this project, if Marty can get to yep. it, this We're project good. has been in the works for way longer than I care to admit. And then finally I said, darn it, it's time to get it finished. Now, this is a combination of flannel and wool. The background is actually flannel. And then all of the applique is wool. And when I first started doing this, I was like, eh, meh. It was okay. But the more I got into it, I started having fun with it. And, like, if you look at some of these stitches... I started doing something a little more creative. Like on this one, the center, I did, that's called wagon wheel, right, Marty? Mm -hmm, yes, yeah, cool. wagon wheel. On this one, I just did like a little star type of thing in the middle. So, um, French knots there. I love this. This is called, I think, a leaf stitch. Um, that's one of my go-to favorites. 
and it just it came alive it was so boring until we got the stitches i got the stitches and i was really pleased and then as my coup de coup de grace or whatever it's called um when i was doing the little dragonfly here and i i don't know if you yeah, can see it yeah. you probably can't i did all the stitching because like the little trail here i did that in a pale gray but then i went back with my metallic silver and if you look at it reasonably close you there is a little glitter on the wings and on the antenna and stuff so again i put my own stamp on it because very frankly i wasn't thrilled with the way the pattern looked but i loved the way this turned out so we what time is it are we running okay no we just need to wind her up okay so let's tell you what we've got for this week we have got what we decided to do is a little discount to get you going on these to get you excited what we did is with our valdani we decided to knock a quarter a ball off right so it's normally 550 so it's 525 five 525 now right. right okay we decided to do kits for these even though they're very simplistic um let's see welcome spring which is this one ta-da this is the frame the fabric the stabilizer and we'll transfer the pattern for you so this one is going to be twelve dollars then we did the mini quilt which is this one and that one is going to be Again, we'll um, transfer the pattern for you, the background, the borders, and that's going to only be $10. Whoops. The Whimsical Runner, which is this one, the one that I've been working on, slow but sure. And when we get these done, we will put them back up on so you can see them. This one, the striped one, is this includes the toweling, the transfer ease, and the backing and the binding, which will be $18. And the last one is this one. Daisy Stripe. Sorry, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Back up the boat on here. I, I misspoke on this. This one does not come with backing and binding because I don't think I'm going to back and bind it. So this one is... Um, 12? I think 12, yes. Okay, and then this one includes everything I just said. The toweling, the transfer ease, the backing and the binding, and this one is $18, okay? okay. The transfer ease, we discounted that... There's, I can't read our There's writing. five sheets in there normally for seven fifty, and I think we took it down to... I can't read your writing, Marty. Is it six, maybe? Six. Six. Okay, six dollars for the transfer ease. The pearl cotton, I told you. And then the buttons, if you are interested in any of the buttons, they are normally two fifty, and we put those at two twenty five. So that'll give you a little bit of incentive to maybe sit there and do some stitching. And you know what? As the weather will eventually get nicer, there's nothing better than sitting out on your porch or your deck Listen to the birds. Sing. But the nice thing is this stuff travels very well if oh you have gosh. to go places. I was just talking to somebody this week that um, her husband was um, having to go to a lot of doctor appointments. And that's what she said. That's why she's really gotten into the wool applique and stitching because she can take it with her for all the doctor's appointments and stuff like that. So it is a one. You don't want to take a quilt with you, but it's a wonderful, transportable, easy project. Um I can't think of, so and I know as soon as we hit end, we will say, darn it, we forgot something. But that's all we can think of, so that's all we will give you today. All right, see you next week. Bye.